Um, we will begin our uh, class again on the molecular relationship. And we're talking about uh, relationships such as marriage. Now, marriage has kind of settled down in a lot of the world to the idea of one-to-one -one relationships. But in the past, and also quite a few places on the earth today, we have a plural marriage. In the uh, Muslim countries, they still have plural marriage. And uh, the early Mormons had plural marriage. And those of you of the Mormon background, some of you think uh, that that is still, uh, some people still think that will be the desirable thing. A lot of Mormons are still looking forward to the restoration of plural marriage where they can have uh, lots of wives. Others dread such a thing happening. But what we want to look at is the principle. Is, um, is a plural relationship wrong? Or is it okay? Or how should it, is it, is a, what is the most desirable? Is the most desirable relationship a one-to-one? -one? And why would that be the case? Anybody got any ideas on that they want to share? Well, I think, yeah, Jay, I think it's, I think it's wrong. <laughs> it's going to sound a little funny. I think it's wrong to say, is it wrong? Because that's a value judgment. And what's right for someone it could be wrong for someone else. So I think we all have to seek that answer within ourselves. Um, you know, if I, if I say having you know, multiple, multiple spouses is wrong, you know, that's really not fair for me to say, because that's my opinion, if you will. So I think we need to look at it differently than right and wrong. Okay, what we're looking at is balance, because to create the molecular relationship where we connect a spirit, we want to create the most balance. Now you can see, for instance, if Solomon's supposed to have had a thousand wives, well, 300 wives and 700 concubines. Uh, how, did, how did these thousand women feel? Did they feel like they were getting a balance of energy from their guy? Okay, so there is such a thing as being out of balance rather than right or wrong. Let's look at out of balance and in balance. What brings the most balance? And uh, uh, so what do you think on that? Any ideas? I think you have to look at the motive. Maybe he was, uh, maybe... Maybe he was satisfying those thousand wives uh, spiritually, uh, not physically. And he was given, <laughs> well, given, and you know how the spirit goes. Yeah, yeah let's, hope, let's hope they got some benefit out of the deal. <laughs> At least they got a, to live in opulence. Apparently, as Solomon was supposed to have been very wealthy. Uh, Ed, you had something? I think we have to look at the motive for any, any such thing as this, so whether it's a lower desire or what it, just really what is it. You know, I can't imagine that two wives, for example. I had enough trouble with the one I had. Yeah, just getting balanced with a one-on-one -on -one is a Herculean task by itself. So, um, uh, matter of fact, look at all the single people we have here just for uh, uh, proof of that. It's uh, and the number of people here have been through difficult marriages. So it, getting balance between the male and female energies is difficult with another person. It's difficult enough just within yourself. The female energy in, in yourself is your emotional self. And your male energy is your mind. And sometimes your mind and heart do not agree with each other. And so... Uh, uh, that creates a problem. Let me see, somebody needs to be on mute here. So anyway, here's, here's what I've taught in the, the book is that each one of us, here's the principle behind achieving balance in the relationship. Romantic energy is involved in any type of a marriage relationship. 
you have two types of energy. You have mental energy and romantic energy. Romantic energy is uh, shared in, by a different principle than mental energy. For instance, let's suppose, as I said, you have a, a secretary and you have a mental business relationship. It's completely non-romantic, okay? And you have a, uh, an associate says, can I borrow your secretary to do a little work for me? And so you think you're not using her right now. So you say, oh, go ahead, borrow her. So you lend the guy your secretary and there's no negative feelings created. And then you get your secretary back a little later and everything goes, everything's cool. Now, let's suppose you're married and some guy says, boy, I think your wife is really attractive. Could I borrow her overnight and have sex with her? And, <laughs> and what would be your reaction to that? It'd be like totally different because the romantic energy is totally different than the mental energy. You can share mental energy uh, infinitely with no negative repercussions. But romantic energy is different. Romantic energy is contained. And each person has one unit of romantic energy, one unit, okay? Now, when you get together and have a romantic relationship with another person, you share a certain percentage of that. You begin maybe by sharing 20%, then 30%, and People are afraid to share 100% because they feel that that makes them vulnerable. The more you share, the more vulnerable you are because if you share a lot of your romantic energy and then that's betrayed, then the hurt is very great. The more you share, the more hurt becomes possible. If you just share like 20% and the marriage, the relationship breaks up, uh, you feel bad for a while, but it's not a big deal. If you share like 80% or more and the relationship breaks up, then you may be devastated, okay? You feel a tremendous vacuum. So in relationships, people share different percentages of themselves. If you have three wives, you have one unit or three spouses, um, some women might want three men, who knows? So uh, it's funny, a lot more women want half a dozen wives than women want half a dozen men. For women, one man is more than they want. <laughs> Quite often, maybe they have more sense than we do. But uh, so if a guy has like three spouses, three wives, let's say he's married to, or a relationship with three individuals, then he's got to take that 100% of romantic energy and divide it up. Now, when it's divided up three ways, then each person would get one third, but it usually that isn't equal. He will have a favorite. So the favorite, let's say the favorite gets 40%, the other two get 20%. That's 80% that he shared and he's kept 20% for himself for security purposes, okay? So the person that he shared the 50% with gets a lot more satisfaction than the, the other two who's only getting 20%. Now, the one that's getting 20% maybe they are totally committed and they're trying to give 100% and so they wind up giving close to 180, 90% and they're only getting 20% back. What happens, this creates a vacuum and a vacuum that sucks their energy of, of fulfillment away from themselves. So they're, they only get a small percentage of the uh, romantic fulfillment that is possible. Now, when two people are together in a relationship, a romantic relationship, and they share, they will share with different amounts. The ideal is to share 100%, but no two people share 100% always because, you know, uh, 
even the most devoted spouse will keep a little bit of the romantic energy for his own fantasy world, maybe visualizing what it would be like married to their favorite movie star or something like that. <laughs> but uh, uh, so the the ideal uh, relationship is where they're sharing like 80 or 90 percent. But oftentimes the sharing is not equal. One partner is maybe totally committed and they're sharing maybe 80, 90 percent. The other partner maybe has been hurt in the past relationships, so they're hesitant to share all the romantic energy, so they're only giving maybe 50 percent. So they have a 30% surplus. The one person is trying to share and share in 80%. The other person's only giving back 50%. And there's a 30% surplus going into the void. And so the person with the, that's sharing the 80% who's giving the surplus feels a little unfulfilled there, like they're not getting enough back. And so they will feel tempted if somebody comes on to them and starts flirting with them and they feel a romantic energy coming into their uh, uh, emotional body, they all think, hey, this feels really good to get this romantic attention. And so this is where the temptation to have affairs comes in relationships because you don't have an equal sharing. With an unequal sharing, the person that's giving overgiving, was giving in the abundance, is not getting everything back, and so they may be getting, uh, they can be tempted very easily. And so the temptation in this case is, uh, part of the blame lies on the guy who's only given 50%. So he's not given enough to the other person, it's an unequal sharing. And whether there's an unequal sharing of romantic energy, the uh, uh, one or both will be dissatisfied. Now, the guy only given 50%, he reserves this 50% for himself. And so he can be tempted too, because if somebody flirts with him, he feels what it's like to have more than 50% shared. And the more you're able to share of the romantic energy, the more fulfilled on the emotional level that you will be. So the idea, like I said, is if both partners share close to 100%, they will feel very, very fulfilled emotionally in their relationship. They'll feel secure, they won't feel threatened, and they'll be at peace. When one shares more than the other, then, then it, things are out of balance. So one of the things that's important for uh, the balance is an equal sharing in a relationship. Um, now let's, let's get some feedback on this. Uh, uh, Rulina, you've been married before, right? Yes. Did uh, did you are you divorced or are you personally? Yeah. yeah. Did you feel was there an unequal sharing? What can you identify with that? Uh, yeah, very much so. Now, now I would guess that you you really tried to share a hundred percent to the best of your ability. Did you do you feel that you tried to do that? Because I know most you the time. Yeah. There were most of the time. I mean, there were times when because of what was going on, I pulled, right. you know, yeah. put a wall yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, it goes back and forth, and this will happen. The person, uh, uh, you're trying to give 100%, and then the other person doesn't reciprocate, so your desire to give starts to go down because it's you're not getting it all back. So, uh, so can you identify with that uh, unequal sharing throwing everything out of balance does that make sense to you oh yeah from what you've been through oh yeah very much and it's not you know and it, it's in in various like it can also be spiritual um so there's different aspects to it i would say there's a spiritual aspect there's a 
a physical aspect. There's a, a heart to heart aspect. Does that make sense? Right. There's all kinds of different sharing. There's mental sharing, spiritual sharing. The key that really creates problems in the marriage, though, is on the emotional level because you have uh, jealousy entering, you have anger, all these emotions, and they're very powerful. And uh, this this has to be stabilized uh, before the higher things can really work the way they're supposed to work. So, um, uh, yeah, think of uh, think of uh, your romantic relationships you've had, and think of maybe your your most intense arguments. Maybe somebody threw stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, it's it's amazing how when you look at it as energy rather than just situations, people people look at uh, the problems in relationships as so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. And it's more to do with energy than anything else. It's an imbalance of energy. An imbalance of energy produces actions that are crazy, okay? But it all starts with an imbalance of energy. And um, so the key is to find uh, a mate, a romantic mate, that balances your energy, that gives uh, the same amount that you are willing to give. If you're willing to give 70%, then you need to find a, uh, uh, a romantic partner that is also giving at least that much, okay? Uh, the ideal, like I say, is if both give uh, 90%, that would be, uh, that would, that would be good because everybody always reserves a little bit for their own imagination. Uh, like I say, uh, maybe your favorite singer or movie star, you, you might uh, uh, think, boy, I, I love that guy or I love that gal. You know, you, you can think just a little bit of twinge of romantic energy, you might uh, hope hold in reserve, which is okay, because none of us are perfect and none of us give 100%, but once you get up to about 90%, you're gonna have a very balanced emotional relationship. Now you may have a balanced emotional relationship, then you got the mind to worry about. Uh, suppose one is a Trump supporter and another one a Trump hater, but you both are willing to give on the emotional level you're gonna have another problem to deal with there. With this. Or one one person bleeds and wear a mask and the other one doesn't, for instance. <laughs> so it, you, we have all kinds of things to divide us on the mental level. So on the mental I, level, it, it works differently. We but, have opinions. Too often we have opinions of how things should be and what our expectations are and that those are quite often just selfish opinions. Yeah. Yeah. So people of today think that uh, one of the misconceptions about relationships is they think that any two people can get along if they just make the effort. But there are relationships where it doesn't matter how much the two are trying, they're trying on different levels from different perspectives and they're never gonna be really happy together. And uh, some of you, I'm sure, have picked a mate in the past and it didn't work out, and it didn't matter how hard you both seemed to work. Now, uh, when I got married, I was given some good advice, and the advice was, in this relationship, you need to give 100% because don't think of it, don't think of it as 50-50, that I give in 50%, my spouse gives in 50%. Think of always giving 100%, because to your spouse, your 100% may only seem like 50%. <laughs> and that's pretty true. Uh, you can be given 100% and your, your partner may think you're not given that much because the your concept of giving may be different from theirs. And so uh, 
uh, because of all kinds of differences, we have all kinds of differences within our being. We have differences in our state of evolution, differences in our emotional feelings, differences in our intellect, differences in our opinion, and uh, if difference, different rays. Different rays is a really big thing because if the ray influence is on like ray two and you're married to ray one, now, Donald Trump, for instance, is uh, he's uh, pretty strong on Ray One, and that's why people on Ray, the even rays, uh, have a hard time uh, dealing with the guy. And people on the uh, one, three, uh, five, seven rays uh, are more uh, accepting. So um, it's interesting that. Uh, uh, the di difference in the rays is a big uh, 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 problem to deal with also. You may have people that are, say, as far as spiritual advancement, they're very similar in spiritual advancement, but they're on totally different rays, and they will have a hard time understanding each other. So uh, you never know. We have... Uh, People that are initiates, that are at each other's throats because they are seen from a different perspective. Now, once a, once the person reaches the third initiation and higher, then they begin to synthesize and be, they can work together. But people below the third degree initiation uh, you can have two secondary degree initiates be enemies at, of each other because they they don't understand from a synthetic point of view. But they're both very sincere people and have both of them have made connections with spirit, but they can't uh, see eye to eye yet. And uh, now a lot of second degree initiates and first degree and even below can see eye to eye, but uh, when certain things enter in, certain ideologies uh, that they accept uh, can wind up dividing them. So, um, excuse me, JJ, can I, can I make an input here? Yeah. Yeah, so I was thinking that on the spiritual part, uh, one should be concerned about giving 100% rather than worry about what you receive from the other person. Uh, because that will allow the energies to be able to work in a way that invariably align themselves. That's, that's what I think. I mean, if there's the need for us to, to be self-forgetful, uh, then it, that means that your focus should be on giving 100% and not worry about what you receive in return. What do you think? Okay, uh, yeah, you should uh, always try to give 100%. Is that your point? You should always give 100%? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I think. You should always give 100%. And don't worry about what you receive because it's, if it is the focus is on service to humanity, which is also service to your spouse, right. and service to your spouse, or service to whoever that receives, that is joined to that energy, then you should focus. Your focus should be on giving hundred percent. I don't worry about whatever, right. whatever you right. say. That was my that was advice I got when I got uh, married. And I I didn't feel like my spouse gave me a hundred percent, but I I tried to give. But the thing is, if you you feel you're not getting a hundred percent, even though you're trying to give a hundred percent back, it's uh, it can be frustrating for the person. But the person should try to at least always give as much as the other person is willing to receive. Now, if the person isn't willing to receive, then you can't really give. And so you can't really give 100% if they're, if they're blocking you. I just, uh, if I could respond to what Terry was saying. Yeah. It might be uh, sort of a different situation in a marriage, but I think in in all relationships, just the default of giving 100% isn't correct. And I think if you're willing to put in X amount, you know, let's say it's 100% or 70% or whatever, and the other person doesn't give that back or doesn't appreciate what you're doing or whatever, 
it kind of creates this imbalanced situation. So you giving 100% to somebody that isn't going to reciprocate that or do whatever the equal appropriate action is, it's basically just enabling this kind of negative pattern. Effect. And it's like, you know, look, if, if you're willing to give 50% and then, you know, the other person gives fat, back 50%, that's, that's okay. But if you turn it up to 100%, it's sort of like JJ was saying, not only are you going to be depleted, but you're creating this situation where somebody else could, you know, like if you open a butterfly's cocoon, they haven't, uh, they haven't developed themselves. And so if you're like, oh, oh that's fine, you give 20%, I'll just keep giving you 100 there's no incentive for them to grow or them to sort of measure up in that. In a relationship or service or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Joshua. Joshua, I get your point, but the point I'm trying to make is that what would be best for your emotional body uh, in terms of how you want to walk through the lower or lower lower four bodies in a way that if you are able to ma that what would be the best for you to actually master your emotional body, then you move on to the mental, then the physical, uh, because. Uh, Following from uh, DK's uh, 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 book with Alice Belly, uh, which I read almost every day, I, I found that the thing about self-forgetfulness is key. Uh, if even the Bhagavad Gita talked about it, that you should do what you need to do, take the actions that you do, not worry about the result. So if you begin to consider about what you are getting from a relationship, either through a spouse or workmate or whatever, then you are so much concerned about achieving something, some sort of aspiration. I think aspirants should forget about the outcome of the aspiration, the outcome of whatever comes out of it. It's just like meditation, you know, like Alan Watts said, uh, you meditate, it's not because you want to be spiritually better, you want to be spiritually more, um, more, more kind of, Pompous, but that you meditate you need to do that is important for, mm -hmm. for, for not necessarily for your spiritual growth because free spiritual growth is a byproduct of your, your equipment for service. So that is where I, 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 I tend to look at it and, and, and that are your own practice. Yeah, well, um, in a relationship, what you have to do is you have to find out what you need to do for balance. Let's say you're in a relationship, you're it's it's not bad enough to get a divorce, but you're not entirely uh, feel like your emotions are reciprocated or you're giving is. So you have to find the balance of giving that feels comfortable. And then you have to shift your attention to, for a disciple to the soul. So you can uh, keep that uh, energy in balance and the emotional level, and then you can shift your attention up to the higher levels and balance them off. Now, outside of romantic relationships, uh, maybe say half of the people here might be involved in a romantic relationship, another half not, but all of us have relationships. Now, outside of the romantic relationships, uh, there's still emotions involved, but it's not a romantic sharing. If you say you have a good friend, you don't, uh, with a, with a good friend, you, uh, you don't feel any romantic sharing at all, but you do feel an emotional sharing. And it's a different type of emotional energy than the romantic energy. Like say there's one unit of romantic energy and we all share that unit in different degrees. But we also have emotional energy like in this group we're in right now. We all have some emotional uh, sharing involved. We all have feelings involved about what's going on and what's being said. And so these, this is a different type of uh, emotional energy, but it's also an emotional energy that can create similar problems to the romantic emotions. Um, Friends can be jealous of each other, just like spouses can be jealous of each other, or uh, friends can really maybe want, feel like they want to show off to other friends. You can maybe get a new car and say, look, look what I got. You don't have this. <laughs> you don't say that openly, but some people think that. And uh, so with- Hey, JJ. Uh, 
With our friends, we have to balance this emotional energy also. Yeah, Stacy. Uh, I was wondering, uh, could they be uh, classified in the same category? Only one's uh, like a different level of uh, emotions than the other one. But uh, feelings, emotions, they kind of classify, seem like they would classify in the same category. But one's just a more intense uh, energy uh, force than the other one. Is that possible? Well, in, in all the worlds, from the astral to the mental, there's different types of matter involved. For the uh, most of uh, the esoteric teachings teach there's seven levels in each one. There's uh, uh, either seven or three or uh, three main levels, but seven divisions are always possible. So the romantic energy is a, a different grade of matter than say a friend emotional sharing. That type of energy is of a different grade. And uh, the emotional uh, grade in romantic sharing is a such that it can really overpower the person. It can drive him to great heights or great lows or, or bizarreness, making them do really crazy stuff. And so, uh, uh, it's a, the romantic energy is very powerful uh, that every, everybody uh, has probably felt, felt one time or another. But with a friend or a, another energy, it's, it's a little di different, is the emotional energy you feel toward little children. Uh, the feeling you get toward little children and the protectiveness you feel toward them is different than the emotional feelings you feel toward a friend. So this is a different type of vibration. So you have different levels of emotional matter affecting the emotional energies that, uh, that we, we share. And so, um, um, so it's interesting to contemplate, but, uh, because, and it's interesting to deal with, because that romantic energy is, is extremely powerful and it is the most difficult one to master so that we achieve balance because it's, it's very intimate. Uh, with the most, I think with the, you could say with the romantic energy is you, you're sharing several grades of emotional matter all at one time and that's why it's so powerful with a friend you're sharing a less uh, fewer grades of, of emotional matter than you are with a romantic spouse and that's why the the sharing with romantic spouses is is, uh, is so intense and difficult to deal with okay any other comments or questions on that One of the yeah. Problems, yeah, the idea of, of balancing the two brings to mind the the two snakes in the uh, caduceus that are, that twine together. Yeah, and, and and the effect of twining on, on loose two loose strands when you twine them, you you apply twist to both each of the strands in the same direction, and then they automatically just come together. Yeah, you know, and but if you're if you have a different amount of twist here, here we go on one side than the other, then you, all you're going to end up with is what you would call a kink, or what stage hands would call a, an asshole <laughs> in, in your in your cord. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Yeah, it work. Uh, the energies are kind of intertwined like that. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, like the two snakes that go up your spine when you become I don't know what is that. Uh, well, you have three. You have three uh, energies going up and down your. Spine. You, have, you have a neut neutral, and then you have a male energy and a female energy, and so you have a trinity of energies going up and down the spine on the spiritual level, which is interesting. Okay, well, what's interesting about uh, uh, 
the marriage relationship is that we pick our spouses and our romantic partners pretty randomly. You may go to church or a group or a bar or a dance and see somebody that maybe looks attractive and you get together and you share some romantic energy, but that's all you did. And when you share romantic energy with a complete sharing as much as possible, when you first kind of meet somebody and are enamored with them, what happens is you, you don't have any obstacles between you and the soul. Let's say uh, you, uh, you go to some social event and there's a, this person that's a pretty attractive person, but you didn't know something about them that they are uh, an ax murderer, okay? But you did, you did not know, you did not know the, this person's history, that the person is really cra a crazy guy or gal and uh, he's murdered two spouses in the past and, you, and he's got away with it. And, uh, but you don't know that, you don't know that at all. And, but he's, he's a very charming person. And so you get together and you're sharing and you don't know anything about his flaws. And so you, you, you can actually, if you overlook this person and only look on his soul, you can fall in love and you can actually share soul energies with this ex murder. But later on, you're going to find flaws in this person that is, is going to develop that you didn't see before. And this is one of the problems, is we get together with people and we, we see beyond the personality and share the soul energies. And uh, uh, we see only the good in the person as we're falling in love, as, as they maybe wrap us around their uh, middle fingers, so to speak. And, and uh, so they can, um, we, we can fall in love with totally the wrong person because when we share those emotional energies, we don't want to see anything negative. We just want to see the beauty in the other person and we fall in love and often we fall in love with totally the wrong person. Maybe we, after a while, we find out we don't agree politically, we don't agree spiritually, we don't agree on the number of kids we want, we don't agree on uh, what kind of house we want to buy, or they, don't, they, they don't agree on uh, the religion, uh, they have different spiritual goals, and so our mating um, approach is totally unscientific. And so this is what, uh, this is one thing we need to do to rectify our situation, to bring humanity into balance, is people need to be taught the importance of planning a partner who is in harmony with themselves. And to be in harmony with themselves, one important thing is to that both people have a similar degree of spiritual advancement. If you have one person that, say, uh, studies the ancient wisdom and really into service and uh, humanity, and the other person just wants to watch football and drink beer, then you're going to have a big gap between them. And so uh, that gap is produced by a misunderstanding of male and female energies. And so that's where we're going to continue next week is on how to balance these male and female energies so they are in harmony. Because to create, put yourself in a situation where you can be a part of a uh, human molecule that can, can connect with the higher realms, balance has to be achieved. Balance is the key. The whole universe is seeking balance. And the whole universe is 
bit created because everything is a little bit out of balance. Wherever there is physical form and manifestation, it's there because the energies are a little bit out of balance. And if say, if say this cup of coffee, for instance, if I were able to balance all the energies perfectly, it would just disappear and go back to spirit. But this cup of coffee is just a little bit out of balance and me being out of balance, I'm going to drink a little bit of it. And maybe I'm a little bit more out of balance after I drank that. <laughs> or maybe the, maybe if the, the coffee is blessed, I may feel more uh, uh, in balance. So we're going to be talking about uh, balancing things off uh, next week. Uh, so any comments or questions before we wrap it up here? Uh, JJ, yeah. uh, just very quickly. I know this this is this is this is a very vast thing, but what about a, a marriage situation? I had a friend. Uh, uh, his uh, his nephew was a a, a follower a follower of a Sun Young Moon, so he yeah. had his wife. You know, he's his wife was doled out to him in that mass marriage situation. Oh yeah. And, happened, and I met the you know I met the nephew. I met the wife. Perf perfectly, they seemed to be perfectly happy together. Seemed to be perfectly nice. I. I you know, but uh, just that whole, that whole, that whole scenario of me, of just, you know, having a mass marriage and just meeting uh, your spouse right then and there is, uh, is just so foreign. And, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, I, I can't just, I can't wrap my, my mind around that. That was so wonderful. I've, I've, I've heard that uh, marriages that are arranged by religious orders or parents, uh, have a success rate equal to uh, uh, the Western world where we, we choose each other. And the reason for that is our choices are almost are quite random because we don't, we don't have a knowledge of how to, how to choose. And part of the problem is, is you know, uh, maybe, uh, Maybe this person that pays attention to us is the first one we met in years that we can even have a relationship with. So uh, we think, uh, well, maybe it's uh, this or nothing. So they want something. <laughs> so that's part of the problem too. So there's a lot of problems in achieving balance in a relationship. And uh, many of us will struggle quite a number of lifetimes before we can achieve that balance. Now we're attempting to create a molecular relationship. And fortunately with us uh, here, it's not geared uh, dependent on romantic energies. However, if those romantic energies that are a problem, they can be a problem in distracting people away from spirit. So they have to be dealt with in a way that brings balance and uh the but male and female energies working together to create balance uh can bring us to the zero point where pure spirit can be reached and that that'll be our goal here uh, and uh, our goal is to understand this and and understand the actual principles behind relationships and bringing balance this is the key to the next great step in spiritual evolution okay any other comments or questions before we sign off with the current uh, situation it's hard to well, isn't it something? hard to reach, reach a state of balance when you can't get out of the house yeah right right now uh everybody everybody uh at least uh probably not in or out of balance where they're confined to their home because but there's always zoom a lot of people are um, finding uh relationships on the internet these days and some of them uh some of them uh not that uh encouraging and some of them very doing very well so Anyway, we have a good group here and a uh, good vibe, so we're on the right track as far as we're concerned. So, okay, anything else before we sign off? Thank you, JJ. Well, thank I have you. a lot of questions, but uh, I will save it to next time. 
Okay, uh, keep the, keep your questions in mind for next time, and we will see you next uh, uh, Sunday at 2 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thank you, JJ. Good class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.